about behaviors important, right? Uh, I think we have to look back and, and talk about you know, kind of our, our populations as a whole. When I started, uh, a long, long time ago, uh, here it was dark, uh, <laughs> the folks that were in our ALFs, you know, really weren't that sick, right? right. So now I think we, we can kind of scale it up and say, folks that are in our skilled facilities used to still be in the hospital. Right. The folks that are in our ALS used to be in our skilled facilities. Absolutely. So I think it's important uh, to, to kind of be sure we touch on these types of topics because, you know, with, as we see people in our communities that are older, that have more comorbidities, you know, more different types of diseases, and, you know, some of these agitation type qualities or, or dementia qualities, you know, it's not necessarily just everyone that's in a memory care unit. You know, it could be people outside of the memory care unit. Um, we took this picture uh, right before a flu clinic. Uh, it, it came a little early and we're excited. Uh, but it's, it, it, it's something that, you know, we see more and more of. I've seen it, uh, you know, unfortunately, over a long period of time. Uh, and that's why, you know, Alan talks about uh, making sure you're kind of have an eye on medications, and I know our facilities aren't full of, of clinical folks, right? So, you know, we're, we're kind of depending on, on people that may not be quite as clinical. So I think the, the take home message from what we're gonna talk about today really is, is if you see something different, be sure you tell somebody. I think that's, that's kind of the bottom line. And then we're focusing on, on these types of behaviors, uh, whether it's combative or, or some of the other behaviors we'll talk about today. Uh, again, because they affect others, right? It kind of affects not just the quality of life of our resident, but it can affect the quality of life of the staff and their neighbors uh, and, and really the whole community. So uh, as, as we struggle really to keep our communities, you know, happy and, and with the least amount of friction possible, I think, you know, this topic is definitely pretty important. So, uh, Alan talked about combative behavior. He talked about maybe one out of five folks that have dementia uh, end up with some type of combative behavior. We want to be sure that the first thing we're doing is not throwing a drug at it, right? Uh, but again, we're not we're not really in a skilled facility. We're not in that setting where you know people are fully trained and redirecting and that type of thing. So what we need to do is kind of focus on you know. What are the distractions that we can put out there? You know, more and more of our communities have pet therapy and fish tanks and bird cages and, you know, outdoor spaces and things that are not just watching the television because, you know, even watching old shows, I've seen plenty of arguments break out because that's not the right old show uh, that, that someone else wants to watch. So. We have to keep those non-pharmacologic interventions top of mind. We don't want to end up, you know, like in the past with everybody on Thorazine and sleeping in the corner. Uh, we want to talk about those underlying causes that Alan talked about, right? But again, identifying a UTI or identifying some type of infection or identifying some type of a, of a pain situation is a lot more challenging in, in our uh, assisted living type settings uh, than they are in more clinical settings. So again, I think talking about it and discussing it is important. When we do our med tech classes, uh, for folks, we, we stress for our med techs that you are the person that, that that resident sees all the time, and when you see a change, you need to tell somebody. You don't have to make any decision about the change. You just need to let somebody know that there's been some type of change. Uh, and I, I think that's definitely important in trying to avoid people uh, ending up on some of the medications we're going to talk about uh, in a couple of slides here. And how do they tell somebody, right? We need to give them a, a plan of how to tell somebody. And, and we kind of break it down right here, describing the behavior, identifying any triggers. You know, Alan talked about putting on a shirt. Uh, maybe that's the trigger. Uh, you know, a, a particular meal, like we talked about already, it could be a television show, whatever that trigger happens to be. And then what's being done to kind of mitigate those risk factors? How do we identify what's going on and then try and either, you know, treat an underlying condition or mitigate 
something that, you know, it's not a, a clinical condition, you know, it's, it's something to do with the environment, how can we mitigate that, right? So those indirect interventions that we're kind of talking about involve a lot of training. I know everyone here is fully staffed all the time and has been for the last four years and everybody is the exact same person, so training is no problem, right? So uh, we wanna make sure that we're focusing on any training uh, that we can get for our staffs. I know uh, through the pharmacy, I know Nancy and, and her team does a great job of making sure that, that we're in the buildings and doing as much training as we possibly can. Uh, a lot of multidisciplinary teams are, are in our buildings now, right? A lot of physicians and providers and nurse practitioners uh, are coming into our buildings, are kind of having their clinic internally, you know, their doctor's office is, is now in the building. Uh, and, and that approach really allows them to, to talk to the staff and talk to the caregivers and maybe communicate with the nurse that's on staff. Uh, so that really kind of builds that multidisciplinary team to individualize treatment options and, and making sure that we're doing what we can do to kind of potentiate any of the indirect interventions that, that we can bring together, right? So 